Danthony Green Tano here, the internet's busiest fantasy nerd. Shout out to my boy Anthony Fantano. People keep commenting like, oh, this is clearly a step off from Anthony Fantano as a video series. And yeah, man, YouTubers get inspired by each other all the time. Fantasy news is largely inspired by Philip DeFranco. I want to have the kind of critical conversations that Red Letter Media has eventually on the channel. YouTubers get inspired by each other. That's like a thing. Uh, and big shout out to Anthony Fantano. I think he is arguably the best music critic on the entire platform, maybe the best critic overall in general. The guy's incredible, and I want to have the same kind of magnificent uh, engagement with this community that he does, and one of the absolutely amazing tools he's invested on his channel is a series like this. So yeah, I want to use it, and shout out to my boy. I don't think any YouTuber's gonna have a problem with people jumping off their own ideas as stepping stones. There's several other channels that do their own fantasy news type thing now, and that's amazing. I want to help promote them doing that for a selfish reason. Honestly, every time they make a fantasy news type thing, I usually end up in their recommended feed, and that's good for me. You gotta understand, we're all running businesses here. Anyway, I'm digressing a bit. I just think that's that's important to keep in mind before you start accusing YouTubers of stealing from each other, because I don't want to see people accusing people doing fantasy type news things of stealing from me. I don't own the news, guys. <laughs> but in this video, you will put forward your hot takes and I will respond to them regarding the fantasy genre, literature as a whole, or just your personal opinion on some stuff, as some people have apparently taken it, and let's go ahead and jump into it. I don't have to disagree with everything. If I think you have a good point, maybe I'll just try to take it to my actual like next step with it, if I even think it should go further, which brings me to my first one I wanna cover here. A good TV slash movie adaptation doesn't mean a one-to-one -one copy from the books slash source material, and the importance of adaptation loyalty is greatly exaggerated in conversations when showrunners Runners should first and foremost tell the story in a way that best suits the medium, and only secondly considers the accuracy of the source material. I agree with this. I do. And I want to take it another step forward. I don't think the showrunner should put their own vision for the source material aside and try to do what they think is pure to the author's vision. I think the best adaptation comes from a showrunner giving their interpretation from the source material. Because if they're a mega fan, as they should be, they will have a vision of the series or what they're adapting that really captures the soul of it. All fans do. So I don't want them stressing out in every page of a script going, is this what the author wanted? No, I want them to have a firm understanding of the material and give what their interpretation from a fan, from someone who loves this work is, as every page of the script. And I feel like that's actually a pretty controversial opinion. I don't think Rafe Judkins, for example, should stress out with every page of the script, is this true to the wheel of time? I would rather his critical feedback for writers be, hey, I don't feel like this suits how I see the series as a fan. Does that make sense? There's a pretty blurry distinction there, but it's a really important one, and I think results in better adaptations. Purely, totally, completely evil villains are good if done right. They don't always have to have a good, less evil side. They can kill puppies on Tuesday for fun if they want, but just do it right. I disagree with this one, and I'm going to push back a little bit, because I think what you're saying is fine, for secondary antagonists. But for me, in adult fantasy, which is where I'm gonna frame this question, I find an antagonist who is central to the protagonist's, you know, antithetical position to have a reasonable standpoint to be crucial. Give them some kind of moral grounding for why they're doing what they're doing, because for me as a reader, that makes the conflict more interesting inherently. I don't think you're entirely wrong when it comes to secondary antagonists. Dolores Umbridge is a total garbage person who has very very little justifiable reasoning for what she's doing. She sucks and she just gets off on hurting people. But I actually think Harry Potter suffers a bit from Voldemort just having the I'm the evil mustache twirling villain. But I think if he had more a reasonable grounding for his moral stances, the series would have actually benefited from that. Stormlight is already better than the Wheel of Time. Hot damn. Uh, let, me, let me push back here because there is certainly arguments to be made against a series that's finished against a series that started. Well, many people like to say that a series that's in the middle of being written is at a disadvantage when compared to one that's finished. I actually find that not to entirely be the case. I think a finished series is open to either
easier and heavier criticism than one that's in the work. Because one that's in the work, you can often say, well, we don't know where this is gonna go. We don't know how it's gonna play out. Where every finished series, you can say, well, look, this didn't pan out perfectly. This didn't pan out perfectly. Where there's a bit of mystery left with a series that's still not even halfway done. So saying the Stormlight is better than Wheel of Time, I feel like Stormlight has a couple advantages because there's all these things that are set up and we know as a creative mind, it's easier to set things up than to stick the landing. So yeah, Wheel of Time didn't stick every landing. So there's more things you can be critical of. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and say on face value that the Wheel of Time in terms of influence, in terms of its importance for the genre, in terms of its character building because it has more pages. And that's one of the few advantages that a finished series does have is it can complete character arcs and we do know what did land is as it stands right now, as objectively as you can say when comparing something like this, a better fantasy series because it's made more waves for the fantasy genre. That being said, I love both of them so much. It's like making me choose between my children, though I do love one of the children a bit more. <laughs> the Hobbit film trilogy is awesome. Don't hate me. I mean, they're not great cinema and they do have their flaws, but when you stop comparing it to the book and the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I think they are all around enjoyable films. Uh, what you're hitting on there though is where the failure comes in. So Lord of the Rings adaptations and the Hobbit films are canonical in the same world as the Lord of the Rings films, the bar was set amazingly high. And fans are justifiable in saying that, hey, you did not live up to the bar that was set. Lord of the Rings films are up here, Hobbit trilogies down here. Therefore, in the comparison of what we expect as fans, it's not living up to what was the standard. And on top of that, it's a Tolkien adaptation. And fantasy fans are passionate about their Tolkien. And there's clearly just commercial grabbing money greedy things going on here that very much so leave a sour, sour taste in fans' mouths. Because of that, I think fans are absolutely justified in saying no, Hobbit sucks because we see a betrayal and direct kind of backstabbing to our fantasy love for these stories. And I'm not gonna begrudge people for thinking that way. In fact, I do. I have a really hard time looking at them as standalone films because of the context they exist in. And there's definitely an argument to be made of, well, you can look at stuff from the different context of just look at them as their own standalone films. And if you do that, maybe they're a bit better. But as a diehard Tolkien fan, who was the perfect age when the Lord of the Rings movies were released to have them to be one of the most just fundamental films to how I developed my taste in cinema. I hate the Hobbit films. I think they are money grabbing, not up to the bar of the standard that should have been set, CGI disasters that were huge betrayals to Tolkien lore. And the fact that the Tolkien estate itself has in a lot of ways just divorced themselves from them and said, we do not, we do not like how it turned out. That's a completely understandable opinion for a lot of fans to have. So basically you're wrong and you should feel bad. No, you're allowed to like things. I'm never gonna tell someone they shouldn't like something. YA is way overrated. I completely disagree with this because YA seems to me, the more I look into it, this totally arbitrary thing that's just thrown on certain books that have a young protagonist and those books can have everything from like a total PG rating all the way up to like R rated and it's still considered YA because they just decided to market it that way. I don't know, YA to me means young protagonist and then the publisher decided, is it YA, is it not, I don't know, but we'll just put the label on there. For me, it's hard to say if something is overrated or underrated when it just seems to be this marketing gimmick almost. I have no disrespect for YA. I don't have a ton of respect for it because I'm just sitting here like, what exactly is it? Eh, it seems like a lot of people trying to just cash in on the success of Harry Potter. That is the current state of YA to me. And I, I, I've loved many YA stories and I've disliked a few, so, Meh, I don't know how to actually respond to this one because to me it's kind of tiring to try and figure out what exactly YA is. Patrick Rothfuss, greater than Robert Jordan. So uh, comparing authors is such a difficult thing and it's why in my versus videos I don't do it. I'll compare series, I'll compare books, but comparing authors is something I actually think we as fans shouldn't do in this way because here's where I'm gonna say you're wrong. Authors are continually developing and they always have different intents with the stories they write. So Rothfuss's intent, at least from my standpoint as a book critic, seems to be writing something that's very beautiful and poetic and the way it's written. He just 
die-hard focuses on his prose. He also really incorporates these mystical fantasy elements where he really wants you as the reader to just constantly be intrigued by this mystery, where Jordan's intent seemed to be about epic fantasy and reinterpretation of a lot of the fantasy tropes we love as fans and developing these ideas, these cultures to just next level. So comparing these different intents I just don't even really see a purpose to it. I will compare their results and how well these authors achieved what they were going for, and that's why I'll do a series versus. But I also don't want to pigeonhole an author by saying, ah, they've developed as much as they can, and I don't want to say, oh, Patrick Rothfuss is not as good as Robert Jordan, because I'm open to the idea of any author becoming the next great author author. I mean, a perfect example of this is I didn't love Brent Weeks' Night Angel trilogy, but I think Lightbringer is one of the most ambitious and unapologetically bold fantasy series we've seen of this generation. If I had given up on him and written him off at Night Angel, I wouldn't have enjoyed Lightbringer. So I'm just going to kind of reject your fundamental idea of comparing authors in this way. In his current state, Rothfuss is better than Jordan in some ways, but every author is better than every other author in different ways. If Mistborn is made into a TV show, it should be animated. So, I disagree with this. I think Mistborn would be better in live action, but you also said another thing here I disagree with where a TV show. I actually, well, I 99% of the time think that fantasy should be TV shows now that they're so huge of series and TV shows are getting the budgets they need to adapt these things properly. Mistborn era one and era two specifically are structured in such a way that I think they would be better as very long movies. I'm talking Lord of the Rings length, but I really do think that's the proper way to go. The way the story's structured, the way it's built, the way the characters develop, I think it would be better as a movie, and I prefer live action for this particular story, though I wouldn't be upset to hear it's animated. I actually care more with Mistborn about whether it's a TV show or movie rather than live action or animated, and I think either way, it needs to be a movie. So really, I disagree with both of your points here, just on structure and progression and pacing and the way the characters are portrayed. But for me, that actually results more in me pushing it back against the idea of TV show rather than animated. My priority here is that Mistborn needs to be a movie one way or the other, which I think a lot of people do disagree with me on. I think a lot of people want to see a Mistborn TV show, but Mistborn, Book of the Ancestor, I would even say Rage of Dragons, th there are just particular stories that, well, in general, I think would be better as shows for fantasy. These select few would be better as movies, and I'll, I'll stand by Book of the Ancestor, and I'll stand by Rage of Dragons for that claim as well. Uh, but then, majority of the time, yeah, go TV show. When it comes to First Law, that needs to be a TV show. When it comes to Lightbringer, that'd be better as a TV show. When it comes to Witcher, I think that's thriving and fine as a TV show. I don't think you could tell that story flat out as a uh, movie. Witcher is too broken up to possibly be converted over to a movie. Modern Trek shows owe more to Farscape style storytelling than to old Trek series. Let me, this is gonna be the one last one I respond to and let me get into a large idea rant here. So I actually recently had a conversation with Tim from Hello Future Me about this where he is a Trek fan, 100% he is a Trekkie, but he's only watched Picard, I believe. Maybe he's watched other of the modern Trek as well, but he's not watched TNG, he's not watched original, and he really likes what's happening right now, and he's all about it, and that's great. But for me, modern Trek is not Trek flat out in my interpretation. If you like it, great. You're a Trek fan. I'm not trying to gatekeep you whatsoever, but Star Trek for me was not about these more shallow character conflicts we're seeing now. It was about ideas and exploring morality and these grand sci-fi concepts. And that's been almost entirely dropped. Instead, we're seeing these things about fate. We're seeing complete betrayals of established lore. I don't want to get into it for spoiler reasons, but Picard has just directly contradicted established Star Trek lore repeatedly and just in massive ways. So for that reason, I kind of really don't like it. I think it's fine sci-fi, but it's not Trek. So I think I agree with your idea because to me, this isn't Trek, at least not in the sense that I'm used to it. It's the evolution we're seeing. I begrudge it, but it's very reflective of the modern state of science fiction. So, well, I 
have a really hard time digesting Picard and this new show, uh, whatever it's called on uh, Explore, whatever the new show on the streaming service is. I, I really struggle with it, but I'm not going to gatekeep it. You're totally a Trek fan. If you're coming in fresh to Star Trek now and you're a modern sci-fi fan, this show is gonna be great for you because I think Picard is doing what it wants to do quite well. But to me, it's just, it's not the Trek I'm used to. And uh, I'm gonna continue to struggle to embrace it. But if this is what Star Trek needs to become to evolve and move on, I'll, I'll let it, I'll let it go. Uh, but this has been your latest Let's Argue, where I, I go on a lot of tangents. I hope you enjoyed this one because I'm, I'm a passionate boy about this stuff, especially Trek. I need, I might, it's, as I crank up the sci-fi, we're going to talk about Trek here more and more on the channel. But anyway, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. <laughs>